building and change the legal occupancy from a six to a seven family residential dwelling. At the July 11th meeting, New were voted to oppose the appeal. This is a revision of an earlier proposal which eliminates the second story additional unit that was initially proposed. Once again, uh, thank you for having me, Daniel Toscano from Drago Toscano, Attorneys in Law. So what we like to do is a proposal is change the legal occupancy from a six-family residential dwelling to a seven-family residential dwelling, legalize the ground floor level, and also add a one-story addition to the back of the property. Um, you may remember the <coughs> proposal was before the, the association and, and the neighborhood council a few months ago. The proposal was to change it from a six-family to an eight-family eight residential unit and to add a full one story that, that laid across the majority of the roof of 49 in the front and 49 in the rear, making that the eight unit. It was approximately about eight, 850 square feet, feet of space for a residential unit with a one bedroom. So here is um, a lot of opposition, especially from the neighborhood council and the resident association. In particular, um, uh, Joanna Daly lives at uh, 57 Charter Street and a uh, young lady that lives in the front, Christina, and I'm not sure of her, her last name, uh, strongly opposed to it. There was some impacts on, on the windows, which is, uh, impacts on light and airflow. We then went back to the drawing board and made some significant changes, and I think, and I'll go through it, and I got some comparisons of the uh, prior proposal as well. Um, there, there are some impacts still to Joanna Daly's uh, unit. Uh, she owns a duplex at 57, it's 4B, I believe, and 5B. So on the 4B windows, there are some impacts. I think Victor at some point will read some testimony into the record uh, on her behalf. Uh, so let me go through it. So 49 Charter Street uh, sits right here. It's a short building. Uh, the front of the building is approximately 30, 35 feet high, and the back of the, the property is only 29 feet high. Uh, so it's a very short building. It uh, has two head, uh, existing head houses. Uh, the front of the property has three residential units, and the back of the property has three residential units. Um, what's unique about this property, there is a ground floor residential unit which is occupied and has been occupied by the former owner of the property uh, for the past 10 years. Uh, he's been living in that unit. I think he's the, actually the only resident currently of that unit. Uh, Dr. Sim Wella, who I represent, who apologize he can't be here today, he's working. Um, he purchased the property and he purchased the property with the stipulation that he's going to keep the farmer owner that lives there. There's some, I guess, some personal issues that are not relevant to this particular proposal. Keep him and he wants to stay in that ground level unit. So we want to legalize that ground level unit for him. And that's going to be the second residential unit that we're legalizing. Right now, it's not. It's approximately, once it's done, approximately about 600 <coughs> square feet of living space as we'll go through it. So, kind of just went through the proposal. The lot size is 1,678 square feet. It's in a multi-family residential sub-district. Um, and really a site plan. So this is Foster Street. This is uh, Charter Street and Michelangelo. So here's our building. There's a little alleyway. It's probably about five to six feet. Um, passageway that kind of goes in the back and kind of wraps around to Foster Street and this is 57 uh, Charter Street which is I believe a 55 foot building so and as you can see us right here little existing site here we are again front view so as always filing something uh, a long farm application with ISD uh, add uh, some living space into the basement and add some on the top floor, you're going to trigger some violations. So the violations that we have triggered is FAR. Um, the previous proposal that we had with the full one-story addition on the top, our FAR went to 3.7. Um, bringing some living space down, we're at 3.42. So that's the proposal that we're at, this current proposal. Um, Open space in a multifamily residential subdistrict, you have to have 100 square feet of open space per unit. Um, we're not proposing any roof decks. Uh, we are proposing a rare deck, some open space for unit number six, as I'll get to it with the proposal for the one-story addition in the back. Um, since we're adding a, a one residential unit, we have to add one parking space. We're already in violation. There's no parking on this site. There'll never be parking on this site unless we knock down a few buildings. So we're going to be in violation of the parking. So we have to in violation. We have to add one parking spot, which we need to seek relief. 
uh, we have a roof structure violation. Roof structure violations sound very similar to what this association sees a lot. Every time you change the structure of the roof, or the, the design of the roof, they're going to get uh, hit with a roof structure violation. By adding that one story addition uh, to the back of the proposal, we're going to seek relief for that. I do anticipate, and I don't have it on this um, zoning code refusal, but I do anticipate a ray yard violation as well. We weren't excited for a ray yard last time because when we went through um, a condition that was set back over 10 feet, maybe 12 feet from the rear property line, so we weren't in violation. Now that we're adding the addition strictly to the back of it, we're close to our property line, only about six feet, so we trigger a violation. I anticipate a new denial letter, and that will get appealed. So moving forward, uh, so this is the previous proposal, if everybody remembers. Um, so this was, uh, Christina had some objections. She lives here. This is 57. Uh, from this spot here, from Charter Street to back here, was about 21 feet. This is an existing head house. It's going to remain, you'll see it on the next pictures, but our previous photo covered the, almost the entire roof. Uh, we've made significant, as you can see, significant changes. This is the, the existing head house here. That's going to remain. Uh, so we're just really utilizing the back of the property, as you can see. Joanna at 57 owns this unit here and this one. It's a duplex unit. So, side, all right, so we got a previous slight site plan as we can see, taking up the majority of the roof here. Um, and we were set back from our property line, so that's why we didn't get cited for a rear yard violation. As you can see here, we're just occupying this, this space here. There's another existing head house here that we're going to just utilize that interior, use that as our interior uh, stairwell. And there's a little deck right here. Probably as you get closer to the Foster, back of Foster Street building, it, it gets a little narrower, but a little out, outside space here. Probably about 40, 50 square feet. Uh, so lower level. So the front of the property is going to be unit one. That's going to be for the uh, prior, uh, the former owner of the property who's going to remain there. Um, Back of the building is just going to be mechanicals, uh, storage, etc. Well, moving forward, uh, unit number three is going to be a two bedroom residential unit. In the back of the property, one bedroom re residential unit. Um, currently, I, I guess I should add, the current, currently there are 12 bedrooms. There are two bedrooms in the front, one bedroom in the back. Uh, so there are probably 12, 12 bedrooms in the current property. After we redesign, the building is going to be fully gutted. It's going to be uh, come down to about 10 bedrooms. Well, not about. It's going to be 10 bedrooms, uh, and the building will be fully sprinkled. Moving forward. So, existing floor plan, uh, same thing. Unit five, unit four in the back. Um, third floor. On the right. I think I. I don't know what. Oh. So unit seven's in the front, I'm sorry, unit one was in the, the, the ground level. I apologize, I mixed up my unit number. Unit, unit one was in the ground level, unit seven is on the existing third floor, two bedroom renovation. So unit number six, this is the one that's being uh, changed, modified. So this is gonna be a two, uh, duplex unit. Right now, the back of the properties are approximately 440 square feet, so they're small units. So unit number, Unit number two and unit number four are the same size, this foot uh, footprint. So moving forward, this is a one bedroom, and when they go up, so this is the, the roof, uh, existing head house. This is an existing head house that's gonna remain, but we're gonna use this uh, head house as part of the interior stairwell, and this is approximately uh, a little more than 400 square feet of just living space that's gonna be added to unit six, gonna be a duplex, and this is some old, open space that looks out towards commercial street and over the you know hopefully over the water but still the height it's only 20 the back of the property is only 29 feet high with this 12 foot addition it's going to go to 41 feet high so this is some front of elevations um, that's certainly not going to be able to see that from charter street as it's going to be set back that's just the uh, front elevation for just to show you where we are this is the previous rare addition, what we originally proposed, and, the re and it was almost, it was a 15 uh, foot addition, and the reason is because the 
front of the building it was higher so we wanted to level off the, the entire building however that's the previous proposal this is the new proposal uh, 12 foot addition the backs are much smaller small um, previous elevations from the side as, as you probably you may remember uh, then the current side elevations shadow study up top you're going to see the existing sun study bottom is going to be the effects of when this addition is up. So as you can see, uh, we got the morning, noon, and three o'clock. So this is without any addition in the back. You can see the shadow here um, at nine o'clock, the morning, 12 o'clock, at noon time, the sun's up high, just, um, got it straight down. And then the shadow comes from really, the sun's coming, coming this way, so the shadow's coming this way. So this is with the proposal. So kind of fills in a little bit here. Uh, a little bit of shadow here at noon time there's really no changes other than a little bit down here uh, but no really not a lot of changes in three o'clock as the sun's here it, it's it's coming here um, I think we have some views as you can see you'll be able to see 57 charter street windows um, summer this is existing and this would be the proposed with the addition um, Little impact here, no impacts in the summer and uh, noon time, and no impacts here because once again, sun's this way. Moving forward to the fall, as you can see, some impact here, no one, well, little impact down here, uh, and then no impacts in the fall. I mean, in the at three o'clock, and this is winter, as you can see, and you have some impacts in the winter here, and impacts here, not at three o'clock as the sun is shifting. Um, I'll go back, so I wanna just, so just so in relation to where the opposition is at 57, what we've been trying to work with them. So moving just to the back of the property, the addition in the back, certainly no more impacts on Christina's uh, unit of the floor. I can't imagine that there'll be any opposition. I haven't heard, heard from her, but I, I, I'm not gonna speak for her, but we, taken all the way back so we're not there. We do have some impacts to Joanna's fourth floor windows which are here and then her fifth floor windows are, we're not going that high so her fifth floor windows uh, see right over the top of ours but the fourth floor windows um, will be impacting some shadows on her windows. Certainly there'll be a structure here that's in front of those windows um, but we have about a five six foot alleyway in between them. Let's see if I can give you a better shot at her building. I'm not sure if I have it. Um, well, so, all right, so this is probably the best. So this is her, so one, two, three, four, five. This, this is a double window. So this is Joanne's fifth floor windows. So she'll see right over. These are the fourth floor windows down here. So we will have some impact on her fourth floor windows. So with all that said, have you answered any questions? I know the architect should be here. If he doesn't get here, he doesn't get here. Um, about his first, I know you have, want to read a letter. Yeah. Join. So I'm just going to speak on behalf of Joanna and John Bailey. My name is Nico Sanchez. And so this is the letter that they wrote uh, for you guys to hear. Yes, yeah, so they weren't able to make it tonight. Correct. Uh, my husband and I apologize for not being able to attend tonight's meeting in person. We hope this letter conveys our strong opposition to the 49-49A Charter Street construction project that will be discussed this evening. The NURA strongly opposed this project when it was last presented, and we ask that you all do so again with this new proposal. We reside at 57 Charter Street, the building directly next door to the 49-49A Charter Street. 49-49A Charter Street was purchased by Dr. Weller with a condition. The prior owner will be provided a life estate and will be a resident in the building for the rest of his life. Attorney Toscano has pointed out that this resident will be occupying a unit in the basement. While this may seem irrelevant, this is an important point to an aspect of the proposed project. The proposed, uh, proposed project includes an additional floor to the building that, when originally presented, was designed to go from the back of 49-49 a charter street to the front. In response to some concerns that we raised, Dr. Weller had the plans redrawn. 
while we appreciate his attempts to address some of those concerns, the redesign has not addressed any of our issues and has created concerns for owners living in the back of 57 Charter Street. While Dr. Weller's revised edition is smaller, its direct impact to our unit has remained unchanged. This project will result in the following. A significant loss of natural sunlight to our unit. A lack of airflow through our unit. Our unit and its windows are on the side facing his building. <coughs> The additional floor will now result in an all, all of our windows to face a wall, a wall that's only six feet away. Lack of privacy. Please know that the prior drawings did not include a deck. The revised plans include a deck which will be right outside our window. When Dr. Weller purchased the building, he knew at the time that it, it came with a tenant from which income would not be received. This project is being proposed for the sole reason of re recouping his losses, and it's being done at our expense. Dr. Well will not be residing in this building. Rather, this building will be a rental property only, which happens quite often here in the North End. We are only losing sunlight, airflow, and privacy, and we'll now have to look at a six-foot wall away so that Dr. Well can make his money. His efforts to make a dollar are negatively impacting our quality of life and reducing the value for, of our home, which shouldn't be allowed. My husband has lived here his whole life, and I have been here for over 20 years, but everyone who lives here has seen this neighborhood change over time. Strangers with a lot of money purchasing buildings with the sole intention, uh, with the sole intention of renting out the, the units. Those of us who live here and contribute to the neighborhood and the community are the ones who have to endure the consequences that these purchases bring. While we may not be able to stop all of the change that negatively impacts our neighborhood, projects like this are where we have a voice and can say no. We encourage everyone in this neighborhood, especially the voting members of Inura, to vote against this proposal. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Any questions from abutters? Any questions from any of the membership? Comments? Comments? Dave Kubiak, Cleveland Place. Uh, first of all, I believe that the purchase price of this building was affected by the, that agreement that the former owner could live in the building. I mean, obviously, that was part of the negotiated price. Second, I cannot support a project that will further increase the value of a building at the expense of the quality of life and property value of an environment. Yeah, I'm Mary McGee. I just like to second what David just said. We see these projects all the time. It's not a hardship, it's not really a necessity for somebody who's living there and trying to um, work with their space. As David said, they are increasing their value at the expense of their neighbor, who is actually someone who lives there. And, and for many of us, we've been through this. And you know, we hear how uh, you know, the impact is minimized by the people who want to do it. I've been through this myself. Um, we had a project where our, our windows were going to be blocked and uh, we were actually told that we were lucky in a way because we appreciate our windows in front which were blocked more now. So <laughs> this is what you're dealing with. Uh, I don't think we as a neighborhood association should really be supporting these things. Anyone else? Yes. I have a question, Dan. If the project were split or to be split, would the owner have any interest or willingness to legalize the basement apartment absent the top of floor? So the question is, so if this project was not to go forward as currently presented and just to legalize the ground level? I believe so. Yes. Because that's where the former owner wants to live. It, been offered maybe a unit above, but I think he's comfortable, so that will be renovated for the former owner. Anyone else? Well, if there's nothing else, I want to once again thank you, 
Mary did. Thanks for the comments. I certainly understand them. Um, Dr. Walla deserves a, a little credit. Uh, he has taken, uh, heard everybody's concerns, went back to the drawing board, made major significant changes. We understand that there still will be some impacts to the fourth floor uh, windows. Um, they will be uh, eliminated some, well, we had windows on the original proposal on the side because of the concern of privacy. There are no windows that would face 57 Charter Street. Um, there'll be some impacts on the, the sun, but less than what was proposed on the last date. So take into consideration, please consider the fact that we were asked to make some changes and listen to the neighbors and work with the neighbors, and, and he's done that. He's shown a tremendous amount of good faith. Thank you for your time.